Good morning. I'm Amy Slaughter Myers, one of the co-rectors at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center. I am reading from one of the texts that was assigned for worship on Sunday, this past Sunday, May 1st. And you might know it as the conversion of Saul to Paul on the road to Damascus. I'm going to read a couple of verses out of the message version of the book of Acts 9. Chapter 9. All this time, Saul was breathing down the necks of the master's disciples out for the kill. He went to the chief priest and got arrest warrants to take to the meeting places in Damascus, so that if he found anyone there belonging to the way, he could arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem. He set off. When he got to the outskirts of Damascus, he was suddenly dazed by a blinding flash of light. As he fell to the ground, he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you out to get me? He said, who are you, master? I am Jesus, the one you're hunting down. I want you to get up and enter the city. In the city, you'll be told what to do next. Saul's companions stood there dumbstruck. They could hear the sound, but they couldn't see anyone. While Saul, picking himself up off the ground, found himself blind. His companions had to take him by the hand and lead him into Damascus. He continued blind for three days. He ate nothing and drank nothing. There was a disciple in Damascus by the name of Ananias, and that goes on in chapter 9 to describe God talking to Ananias and sending Ananias to Saul. And Ananias is like, God, this guy Saul is persecuting the likes of me. This guy Saul is out to get the likes of me because I follow you. How can you ask me to go to Saul? But the master said, don't argue, go. So Ananias went, placed his hands on blind Saul and said, brother Saul, the master sent me the same Jesus you saw on your way here. He sent me so you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. No sooner, sooner were the words out of his mouth than something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again. He got to his feet, was baptized, and sat down with them to a hearty meal. Again, this is um, Acts chapter 9. I mean, this, there's so much richness in this story that likely you have heard before this road to Damascus story that Saul uh, experiences and through the intervention of Jesus and through the uh, obedience of Ananias becomes Paul and becomes Saint Paul and becomes the representative in a profound fashion of the people of the way that is the people who follow Jesus. I don't know how you hear this story of this conversion experience today. I wonder if you yourself have ever had a road to Damascus experience in your relationship with God. I've only known one person who had something like a road to Damascus experience, and it happened in such a surprising way that I wouldn't have even expected it of this person had he not shared it with me. This person had long been a Christian, had long been a leader in the church, and he found himself on a dark road in the mountains many, many years ago and had a, what he called a conversion experience. In my experience, in my walk with God, I have 
a number of smaller conversion experiences. I think of the way as uh, the author of the book of Acts describes the followers of Jesus as a daily conversion experience, if not hourly conversion experience, if not minute by minute conversion experience. And by conversion for me, it isn't necessarily going from something bad or something less than or something broken or something negative to something positive. It's rather a deepening of faith and a deepening of the eyes of faith and a deepening of my heart and mind and spirit. I invite you to reflect on your own walk with God and your own conversion experiences. And please reach out to me if you would like to tell me about them. I would like to hear them. Amen.